Okay, and good afternoon, everybody. Chris Ty coming to you from the 20th floor of the Justice Center in downtown Cleveland. We are outside the courtroom of Judge Timothy McCormick, where we learned at the top of the hour that the jury has now reached a verdict in the murder trial of Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis. They are, of course, the mother and boyfriend of Anaya Day Garrett, that four-year-old girl who died about a year ago. Let's take a live look inside the courtroom as all of the players are now arriving here. We should have the jury coming into the courtroom in the next few minutes to kind of give you a sense of what we're dealing with here. Anaya Day Garrett died on the 11th of March, 2018. Prosecutors say she suffered two years of abuse and neglect reported by the daycare that she went to, reported by family members. Yet the Department of Children and Family Services in Cuyahoga County time and again failed this family and failed Anaya Day Garrett, who, as we said, died at the weight of 26 pounds, incredibly malnourished. And today, her mother, Sierra Day, and her boyfriend, Deontay Lewis, charged with murder, aggravated murder, child abuse, tampering with evidence. The maximum sentence here today would be life in prison without parole. As you take a look in the courtroom inside here, courtroom 20C in the front row is Anaya's father, his name, of course, Michael Garrett. He has been watching this with painstaking focus. You see his family seated next to him. He tried to get custody of Anaya throughout all of this, but Anaya's mother, Sierra, kept getting restraining orders, preventing him from taking care of her. As we kind of await the jury's verdict here today, let's kind of summarize the case as we understand it. Sierra Day's attorneys claim that her actions did not purposefully cause the death of her daughter and that there was no intent. Deontay Lewis, Sierra's boyfriend, his attorney said he did not live with Sierra and was not around for much of that two years of abuse and neglect. Prosecutors pushed back very hard on that, saying that she suffered a slow death. Prosecutors say the goal was indeed to kill her, saying that, quote, this mother and boyfriend don't have a soul and that the mother was a master manipulator. The jury, let's talk about them here for a moment. They debated and, uh, and, and mulled over for about an hour yesterday. They came back at about 9 a.m. today. They, they deliberated for five more hours until 2 o'clock this afternoon. When we got the word that they did indeed have a verdict, we were told that they worked through lunch inside the jury room. A pizza was brought in, and they worked through all of this. Now, this is a very loaded case. You have not one defendant, you have two. You have not one charge, but you have a handful of charges. So there are a lot of moving parts in all of this. And, of course, the centerpiece of it all is that four-year-old girl who died a year ago that prosecutors say was at the hands of her mother and has really exposed the Department of Children and Family Services. You're looking live inside the courtroom as prosecutors and defense attorneys and family members and key witnesses, too, all back here waiting to hear what this jury is going to deliver in the next couple of minutes. Judge Timothy McCormick was commiserating with some members of the media right around five minutes to two, shooting the breeze, and all of a sudden he got an alert saying that this jury is back. This is a case that has gotten the focus of not just Cleveland but northern Ohio and much of the country because of how the county failed little Anaya. And today we will find out whether or not Sierra Day, her mother, the 24-year-old, and her boyfriend, Deontay Lewis, the 27-year-old, will indeed pay for her death. We're going to continue to stream this coverage all afternoon until we get this verdict here at WKYC.com and on all of our social media platforms as we see a just a gaggle of deputies there inside courtroom 20C and the attorneys on the right-hand side, the woman in blue, is the defense attorney for Deontay Lewis. On the left side of the screen is the prosecution. They are just kind of moving their way back. The mother of Sierra Day uh, just walked in the courtroom. My photographer, George Payam, was just telling me. So all of the key players here. Um, we were talking with one of the attorneys earlier who said this waiting game, even after 20-some years of doing this, simply does not get any easier when you just don't know. And I asked her, I said, what do you look at? try to wait this out and try to figure it out. She goes, you can look at the demographics of the jury and you can trust your gut, but it's those facts that you've presented to them over all of these days and hours, and you hope that that is what resonates. Three dozen witnesses, a pathologist among them, the pathologist told the jury that it was trauma to the head that triggered a stroke that killed Anaya back 
in the middle of March of last year. Her father, Michael Garrett, as we said, tried to get custody, but Sierra, his, the, the, the child's mother, just kept refusing and saying, no, she is mine, and continued to get a restraining order to prevent him from getting custody. If you're just joining us, we learned at the top of the hour there is a verdict in the case of Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis in the death of Anaya Day Garrett, the four-year-old who died from a result of blunt force trauma that led to stroke. Uh, and among the testimony that, uh, that the jury heard was that she lost all fat and all muscle. She was just as brittle as could be. So when there was blunt trauma, it was dramatic. And that is what led to her death on March the 11th. We're continuing to wait outside courtroom 20C as all of the key players arrive. We were told at about 5 to 2 that it would be about 20 to 25 minutes until the verdict comes in. And we are told that there is a meeting in the judges' chambers right now. So i tell you what we're going to do. We're going to go and do some reporting on that and try to find out what we can learn. And i um, going to continue to keep our feet up here on our Facebook page, our WKYC.com website and all the streaming focuses that you're getting us from today. And i uh, going to pause our microphones, going to do a little reporting, and pop back here shortly. Again, we're continuing to wait on the verdict in the case of Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis. This is Chris Ty reporting from the 20th floor of the Justice Center. We will be back with you shortly. I was going to say logistically, you'd have to run up to get the lob and turn it off. Good, I think, I think we got the staff crew. Good. I'll just concentrate on the hearing and proceed instead. And we are back now outside courtroom 20C as the case against Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis is about to come back. The jury, we are told, is about to enter Judge Timothy McCormick's courtroom once again. They have been debating 
uh, deliberating five hours today, an hour yesterday, and we were told at about five minutes to two that there would be a verdict this afternoon. We're told there was a meeting, a brief one, in the judges' chambers just a few minutes ago. Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis, I'm going to ask the crew back at the station to hit mute on their phone. As Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis are facing murder, aggravated murder, child abuse, and tampering with evidence charges, they could face life in prison without parole if they are. The book is thrown at them. But again, this jury, who has been debating for about six hours total, has that to decide. As we look here, we are about to see the two defendants, we believe, coming in from that center area from the courtroom. If you've been on jury duty in Cuyahoga County, you know that is where the defendants come up and down from the jail through the elevators. Their attorneys are in. The defendants are in. You see both Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis making their way in, him there in that yellowish-orange suit, attending now next to his defense attorney in that blue dress. We talked to her earlier today. She was saying how this is just the most grueling part of it, waiting to find out how much blame the jury is going to put on her defendant, Deontay Lewis, who was, as we know, was the boyfriend of Anaya's mom, Sierra Day, who walked in a few moments ago in that floral shirt there. She's the 24-year-old. He is the 27-year-old. And the father of Anaya is also in the front row, just a few feet from these defendants. And he's been here the whole time watching this trial unfold. And we will watch this verdict come down in the courtroom of Judge Timothy McCormick as this jury is now back. Let's listen into court. Yeah. All rise for the jury. <laughs> you may be saying good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. We're back on the record at case number 626-899-A and B, State of Ohio versus Sierra Day and Deontay Lewis. Defendants are in court with counsel. Defendant Day with uh, Thomas Shaughnessy. Defendant Lewis with uh, Nicole Longino. Present from the State of Ohio is Anna Ferralia, Aquella Jordan, and uh, Sean Kilbane. Ladies and gentlemen, have you reached a verdict in this case? We have, Your Honor. If you could give the verdict forms to my bailiff, please. Count one, aggravated murder. We, the jury in this case, being duly and panel sworn, do find the defendant Sierra Day guilty of aggravated murder in violation of Revised Code 2903.01c of the Ohio Revised Code as charged in count one of the indictment, signed by all 12 jurors. Likewise, count two, murder. Uh, guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. A further finding with respect to count two is guilty of felonious assault, uh, permitting child abuse, endangering children as to the uh, offense of violence under the murder B of count two, signed by all 12 jurors. Count three, guilty of felonious assault, signed by all 12 jurors. Count five, endangering children, guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. Further finding that the defendant did cause serious physical harm to an eye a day, signed by all 12 jurors. Count six, endangering children, guilty. Signed by all 12 jurors, further finding the defendant did cause serious physical harm to an eye a day, signed by all 12 jurors. Count eight, tampering with evidence, guilty. 
signed by all 12 jurors, I'm sorry, count seven as well, guilty of endangering children, <coughs> signed by all 12 jurors. The further finding with respect to count seven, the defendant did cause serious physical harm to Anaya Day. With respect to uh, defendant Lewis, count one, we, the jury in this case, being duly in a panel sworn, do find the defendant, Deontay Lewis, guilty of aggravated murder in violation of 2903.01c of the Ohio Revised Code. Count two, murder B, defendant is guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. With respect to the further finding of the offense of violence, he was guilty of uh, felonious assault, signed by all 12 jurors. The further finding of uh, permitting child abuse was guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. Uh, and uh, endangering children is guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. Count three, the defendant is found guilty of felonious assault, signed by all 12 jurors. Count four, permitting child abuse, found guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. Count five, endangering children, found guilty by all 12 jurors. Further finding, he did uh, cause serious physical harm uh, under the uh, further finding of endangering children. Count six, guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. The further finding was in the affirmative, signed by all 12 jurors. Count seven, endangering children. Found guilty, signed by all 12 jurors. The further finding was in the affirmative. He did cause serious physical harm. Signed by all 12 jurors. Finally, count eight, tampering with evidence. Found guilty by all 12 jurors. Uh, counsel, Mr. Shaughnessy, do you wish to have the jury polled? Once it's all words, please. Sure, um, likewise, Ms. Longino, obviously, you want the jury polled. Collectively, ladies and gentlemen, is this your uh, juror number one? Is this your uh, juror uh, verdict as to both defendants? Yes. Juror number two? Yes. Juror number three? Yes. Juror number four? Yes. Juror number five? Yes. Juror number six? Yes. Juror number seven? Yes. Juror number eight? Yes. Juror number nine? Yes. Juror number 10? Yes. Juror number 11? Yes. Juror number 12? Yes. Okay, uh, the record should reflect that we do have the two alternates in the jury box. Obviously, they did not participate nor observe the deliberation process, uh, but we did have them available if their service was needed. Um, I want to thank you for your service in this matter. I will address you separately back in um, the jury room. All rise. This time, uh, the defense will be remanded without bond. Sentencing is set for March. Is it twentieth? March twentieth at uh, twelve fifteen. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you. Just hold out the way, would you? Eric, can you slide over left? I can't see. Slide left. My camera? Yeah, yeah, just a little bit.
Excuse me, would you like to come over and say something to us? Would you like to come over and say something to us? He doesn't want to say anything. Okay. Thank you. Attorney Paul Greco from Lance Garner Greco Merriman on behalf of the Garrett family. Um, we're coming up on a one year anniversary of Anaya's death, so obviously this is a bittersweet moment. Uh, the Garrett family certainly thanks the jury for their service. They paid close attention to all of the evidence. Um, that evidence clearly substantiates the verdict on the, against both defendants. This is the first step in uh, responsibility and accountability for Anaya's death. Uh, there are certainly other responsible parties that will be held accountable. The system failed the Nye and the Garrett family, and that system will be held accountable. So. What do you think resonated with that jury most? I think it's just the overall evidence was, was clear cut. Um, the photos obviously were horrendous, um, and just the ongoing pattern of, of abuse uh, over a long period of time. Were you surprised that they came back so quickly? Not this? really. No, I predicted they would probably come back this afternoon. Did Michael say anything after the verdict? Did he, he was apparently pretty emotional. Sure, just an indication this is obviously the first step in justice for Anaya. He had words with the suspect as he left. Do you know what he said? I don't, I didn't hear that. And you could care less about it. This is all about Anaya, and this is the first step in justice for Anaya. So the other report. Thank you very much. That's and what's it. your name again, sir? Paul Greco. Thank Paul you. Can you spell okay. Paul last name? G-R-I-E-C-O. Thank you. Okay, so that is Paul Greco. On Facebook here, uh, Kevin Freeman here on the 20th floor of the Justice Center, um, where that was Paul Greco, that was the Garrett family attorney, uh, Anaya Day Garrett, uh, his daughter, four-year-old girl, uh, now who you can say her, her mother and mother's boyfriend now convicted of aggravated murder for killing her, uh, Sierra Day, her boyfriend Deontay Lewis, just moments ago, found guilty of aggravated murder and the little girl's death. This uh, trial lasted uh, pretty much for most of the week here uh, with some very emotional testimony. Uh, my father, uh, Michael Garrett, did leave. He did not want to speak to uh, reporters uh, right now. You can understand that he, can, he is uh, pretty emotional uh, right now, knowing that his, uh, the mother of Anaya and her boyfriend now convicted uh, of killing uh, little Anaya Day. Uh, the sentencing will be on March 20th at 12:15 uh, in the afternoon. Uh, that's when both will be sentenced. Uh, again, this just happened. You heard from uh, Mr. Grico. He's the attorney for the Garrett family, saying this is now justice for Anaya, the first step, and also saying that the system, uh, the system failed her. Many reports of abuse to this little girl. Uh, but still, Thank you. Can you uh, just spell your first and last name? Yes, my first name is Aquela, A-Q-U-E-E-L-A-H. Last name Jordan, J-O-R-D-A-N. Can you just describe the prosecution's um, reaction to that verdict today? That was pretty swift and that was pretty loud. We are very pleased that there is some sort of justice for Mr. Garrett and his family. Whenever a child is harmed in our communities, we want to get justice for them. So we are pleased that this process worked the way it did. Were you at all surprised uh, that the jury came back so quickly? We can never predict a jury verdict. What I can tell you is that our law enforcement, the Euclid Police Department, did everything they could to help us compile a case that we could pre present to the jury that we were confident in the outcome of. For Anaya, today was what? 
For Anaya, today is a day for her spirit to be at peace. People finally listened to her, and she was heard. Do you think this verdict sends a message to anyone else in the future, whether it be parents, whether it be social workers, child care workers? What? This verdict should send a message to those in our county that we will not permit our children to be harmed. If you hurt our children, we will prosecute you in every way that we can. How important was it for you to tie both of them together? How significant was it that both of them got found guilty on all counts? It's significant whenever anyone who harms a child is held accountable for the things they do to our children. If you harm a child, you should be held accountable. Was there ever any doubt that the jury would come back with a guilty verdict? We can never predict the outcome of a jury. All we can do is our job for our community, and that's what we did today. What do you think uh, it was about this, this case that resonated with people all over the world? Anaya, you had a father, Mr. Garrett, who fought every step of the way for his daughter. What made this compelling was his fight and Anaya. I can hear in your voice this is a personal <laughs> personal case for you. Can you explain yes. what this was like for you as an attorney to, to represent her legacy? For me, as a citizen of this community, it's important to represent every victim, every child. They all matter to me. They all matter to every prosecutor in this office. We love our community. We are part of this community. We are here to help you. This was about us helping our community. But was this case not different? I mean, this was a very high profile, very gruesome case. I mean, I hear in your voice real passion. I'm passionate about every case. <laughs> if you've been in the case with me, you know. Okay. All my victims matter. Anaya matters just as much as everyone. What message do you want to send to any other parent who may be doing something like this, contemplating something like this, not taking care of their children as Anaya was not taking care Get of them? Get help. Get help. And if you need to give your child to someone who can help them, do that. Let your children be children. Let our youth be you. What do you say to the system that in some way people say failed Anaya? Everyone has a responsibility in our community to do your job. There are some who did their job. I applaud the Euclid Police Department for doing their job. And others? I applaud the Euclid Police Department for doing their job. Thank you for your time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Spell your name again for me. Huh? A Q U E E L A H. Okay. Last name? Yes. Okay. Okay, that's one of the prosecutors in the case. Uh, you heard her say there again, just to wrap up, if you're just uh, tuning in to the Facebook here. Uh, there's a guilty verdict here, too. Uh, aggravated murder uh, for Sierra Day. That's the mother of Benaya Day here, a four year old girl. And Deontay Lewis, her boyfriend, found guilty just a few minutes ago by a jury of aggravated murder. Both of them uh, here uh, in the death of four year old Anaya, as we heard there from the prosecutor, one of the prosecutors in this case, uh, that the system failed Anaya. So there's no beginning of course of abuse uh, of Anaya. And uh, she, was, she was still able to stay uh, with her uh, mother here after many, many, uh, many reports of this. So again, as I mentioned, we're here on the 20th floor of the Justice Center. We continue to get reaction to this. Again, you heard her talk about Michael Garrett, the father. He's been very outspoken since this happened. And he did come out, but he didn't want to speak uh, right now. His attorney spoke for him uh, and pretty much said, 